Hi, we're here with Deborah Coates Garcia. Oh, it's Garcia. a little video It's thing. a little flip. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Don't you love these? That's great. I actually don't know those, but I should. A study about this whole idea of, of eating locally, you know, food sheds. They call mm-hmm. them food sheds. And they did a study with the, the San Francisco food shed being 100 miles around San Francisco. And that we could feed ourselves, the whole San Francisco Bay Area could feed ourselves from within that 100 miles and have, have stuff left over. So it's kind of nice to know because now everybody's, you know, freaking out about how do we feed ourselves and what happens if there's no gas. And so that was nice to know that we're going to we're going to be able to feed ourselves really well. Well, that's part of what your film's about, right? It is exactly. Yeah. Autonomy and food kind of what they call food sovereignty now. You've been referred to as a food activist. I think I am a food activist. I guess. What is that? (laughs) I'll actively seek out good food, I guess. Well, I think it's. you know, I, I, I started, I became a vegetarian in 1970, and that's, and I also started making films then, and I think tonight when I speak, that's one of the things I'm going to talk about, but the same time when I became, you know, it was back, you know, it was that whole back to the land thing and macrobiotic, you know, it was that whole, that whole era when people were, were thinking of new ways of, of feeding themselves and doing things, and so I became aware of food and health and food and social justice issues, and I also started making films, so... I had always wanted to be a, a, a f- film and food activist. You know, well, I mean, I had that goal in my mind all these years. Like one day I'm going to make a film about everyone should eat, you know, healthy food and grow, you know, grow things organically. And so this film, The Future of Food, this this one that we're going to see tonight, um, I was able to to bring that together, which was kind of really great. And you're obviously very passionate about it. Uh, what's the Edible Schoolyard project? The Edible Schoolyard is something that Alice, Alice Waters kind of started, but uh, about this idea, which it, it actually um, works well in California, doesn't work so well in New York State, because when kids are in school, it's actually, you know, during winter, <laughs> and nothing grows. <laughs> yeah. So, it, But it's the idea, the larger idea of that is, is for children to really learn more about food, what good food is and healthy food is and connect up the idea that food grows in the ground and that it's okay to pull a carrot out of the ground and eat it even though, ooh, it was in the ground, they don't want to eat it. So this whole idea of food education, not only what they put into their bodies, but um, how, how does it get there is I think a great thing. And there's actually been, there's a lot of new regulations all over the country about what kids can eat and, and not allowing, a, a, like, I was speaking in West Virginia several months ago, and they were saying that even their food stuff has changed because they have, like, the worst or second worst health in the nation, and they got upset about that. So even they, instead of just having Twinkies, they'll have uh, carrot cake. So this this idea that it starts in the schools and that it starts, well, it should start at home, but a lot of times it doesn't start at home. But that whole idea that Alice has been um, probably the most... Um, well-known activist in that field. There's mm-hmm. actually lots of people doing it. You know, there's lots of moms, you know, getting together. Oh, it it's called In Good Heart, Soil and the Mystery of Virginia. How's that coming along? It's going really well. We have a thir- little 13-minute uh, short that I made from the material. It's not a part of the film. I just made it from the material because a great nonprofit that does research about organic food called the Organic Center asked me to present it at their benefit. And it's about, basically, it's kind of about composting. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, a, so, but people have found out about it, so now it's showing in all these festivals. It was like its own little thing. It showed in the Slow Food Fe- Film Festival and the Mill Valley Film Festival where I lived, and it's showing at Eco Farm, and I'm going to England to show it at the Soil Association Conference. So it's like its own little film. And, I mean, it's about more than composting, but it's this idea that, that the soil is alive, mm-hmm. you know, and there's all these billions of organisms. And then this larger idea, which is, is what composting really is, is that we have to give back to the soil. Oh, sure. And your Can't films just... have had a lot of critical success, too. Yeah, they actually really have. I've seen the awards. What, what about commercially, though? Have, have they been profitable in a commercial way? Well, the future of food has been done very well. And one of the reasons is um, it was very timely, you know, right. when it came out. Uh, people were hungry for that kind of information. Although Dan Quayle was in it. That was... <laughs> yeah, well, we, because he's the one that said that they didn't want to regulate GMOs. Right. Because that was a historical It started back piece. in that time. Because everyone talks about him saying that, but we went and found him saying that, which was really great because everybody knows that he said that, that mm-hmm. he didn't want to regulate those. It's part of that whole non-regulation thing. So that, um, 
So yeah, actually, one of the great things about the future of food is that the two co-presidents of, of Whole Foods, um, Walter Robb and um, John Mackey, uh, declared that all the Whole Foods had to carry it. So that's like 200 stores. And the, great, and you know? the, the idea of uh, companies genetically owning life, right. you're very against that. Tell me why. Yeah, the patenting of life is, the patenting of DNA is problematic because people didn't really invent the DNA, you know? And once they patent that, then anything that DNA gets into, they can claim rights over. So it's not something that we've ever voted on. It was because of a Supreme Court decision. I think we need to reassess all that. Do stuff. you think there's any legal way that that can be undone, though, at this point? Have you had people look into it in terms of undoing these patents? Well, I think what we would need to do is have Congress address the issue, which they haven't. I mean, they've got so much to deal with. But I think that this idea of, of for example, the, the most obvious case of that, which is so problematic, is the idea that if you have a patented you have patented DNA in, in, in pollen, for example, mm -hmm. and that pollen floats over to your field and gets in your crops, suddenly you're violating someone's patent. I mean, that's weird. Which so, was the point in your movie? Which was what we did with Percy, and you know, that's still happening. So that's a problem. I mean, anybody, that doesn't make any sense. So there's got to be some way that we deal with that. Are you but, involved in any organizations that are trying to address Congress about this? Well, the Center for Food Safety, and Andrew Kimbrell is in the film. And I, you know, I think it's, um, they actually passed a, a, a law in California recently that said that if, if that happened to a farmer, then he wasn't, uh, Monsanto, he wasn't liable. So it goes right up against patent law. And we'll see what happens, because patent law is federal law, and that's a state law. So we'll see what happens. But the way that it's written, they've told me that they're not going to be able to like, throw it out because it's the state trying to deal with the patents but it has to do with the, somehow they worked it so it was under contract law. But it's, a, it's an issue that you know people are dealing with. In fact, I just got a phone call from a farmer a couple weeks ago from Indiana, and he called me up and he said, hey, you know, I'm whatever his name was, from Western Indiana. Have you ever had trouble with Monsanto? And I said, well, personally, no. And he said, well, I'm in trouble now. And so he talked about the issues that had just happened to him. Oh, he, so that you're a good a source of information. Yeah, he had a found lawyer, and he was with other farmers who were in that same situation. But I was, um, you know, it was interesting to get a call out of the blue like that. And, and so I gave him some names. And, you know, it was, these farmers are great because they're all, they're pretty conservative. A lot of farmers are pretty oh, sure. conservative, the ones in the Midwest. But then this happens to them, and it kind of changes their whole point of view about the path they've been led down.